start by dampening the area that you're going to paint with a, a clean brush and clean water. Try to cover the whole area. Now you want the paper to be shiny wet, but you don't really want a huge puddle, so be careful of that. I think I just gave it a, a big huge puddle. So what I'm going to do is I'll show you what to do when you get a huge puddle and you don't want it. Your brush acts like a straw, so lay your brush down, let it suck up some of the water, dry it off on a towel. Keep a towel beside you at all times when you're watercoloring. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to get some paint ready here. This is um, Honey Amber by Twinkling H2O, but you can use any kind of watercolor that you have, even re-inkers and paint with ink if you want to. When you're watercoloring, it's fun to just be loose and not worry about getting every nook and cranny because part of the effects of watercolor painting is having open spaces, white areas where there's no color. Looks like a highlight. Just a cute effect. I like it. And the paint kind of moves in the water, which is kind of fun. Part of the unexpected things that watercolors do. Okay, cleaning off my brush now, I'm going to move on to his face. I'm skipping his ear and nose because they're going to be different color. Again, too much water, so using my towel, drying off my brush, coming back in, and it's just a damp brush now, sucking up some of that water. I usually start putting the color down where I'm, I'm going to want it to be the darkest because when you're watercoloring and you've got watercolor paint on your brush, you start to let some of that paint go the very first time you touch it to the paper. So as you're going along, it's losing paint. So that's where you, when you want to start where it's going to be darkest. And I always uh, try to put the least amount of color around the eyes because I want the eyes to show because that's where it shows expression. Cleaning off my brush again now. Oh, the paw. Let me do the paw. Now we can do the ear and the nose. I'm going to use cedar wood. Leaving a little bit, um, uh, not touched with the brush, just for highlights. I like that. Now I'm going to clean off my brush, but I'm going to, and I'm going to uh, draw it along my towel just to make sure it's just a damp brush. And I'm going to go over the whole body with a damp brush and come back in with some of this brown for shadows. And you'll see the dog really be brought out. Actually, I think I kind of want to darken his tail with this color as well.
When you're adding shadows, it's best to work with an image that's damp. So you might have to come back in and dampen it even a couple of times while you're working on it. It might dry up as you're working on it. It dries pretty fast. So far so good for me, so I'm just leaving it. This is one of those really wrinkly dogs. I believe they're called a bloodhound. I'm going to have to dampen the front paw and face, dry it off a bit on my towel. Under the ear, and around the paw. And under his nose a little bit, darker too. Ah, I like that. Okay, now I want to give him a little bit of a blush, because this is a whimsical little character. So I've got Ruby Red, again with just a damp brush, I'm making a little circle circle of dampness where I want this Ruby Red. Now red is a very, very strong color, so you just need a teeny, teeny, teeny bit on the end of your brush. I don't know if you can see it there. Good enough. Now to work on the, give them a bit of a ground to stand on. I'm going to change over to a number 10 round because I've got a large area to cover, so I want a nice fat brush. Got lots of water on it. Trying not to hit the actual painted portions of the dog because I don't want his color bleeding into the ground, but if it does, it's no big deal. Now this you do want to puddle for, and I'll tell you why. The effect that I want, I want the paint to really move around in this puddle. So I do want it to be very, very wet, and you can actually see a ridge of water. Now watch this. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? I love that about watercolor. Oh, it's fun. So amazing, so fun. That's so beautiful. I love watercolors. And just to make it interesting, you're not trying to cover the whole area. Make little spots here and there. Look at that. Gorgeous, eh, girls? Guys? Could be guys watching. Ah, I love it. Let's give it a few blades here and there. This is painting on dry paper. I'm just bringing up a few strokes for grass. There you have it. We're done. See, that didn't take long. <laughs>